Hello and welcome to our first episode of our Inspiring Future Leaders series brought to you on the first day of Black History Month. It's incredibly important we recognise and celebrate the fantastic achievements of people from African and Caribbean backgrounds fundamental to our British history. Values and contributions that are often overlooked. It's equally critical we look forward. Whilst entry rates to higher education have improved amongst black young people, retention rates are generally lower and degree outcomes poorer. We currently don't have any black executives in the three top roles of the FTSE 100 companies in the UK. So there's clearly a disconnect. So over the next five weeks, brought to you by Enterprise, we are hosting a series of informative discussions on the topics that we feel are crucial to the students of today, our leaders of tomorrow, especially to those applying for opportunities and transitioning into the workplace. We'll be highlighting the journey of many of our Black Heritage employees throughout October, the resilience they have demonstrated and the encouragement and support that they have found. Today's episode is brought to you from our Northwest region, and we will be discussing the importance of addressing your insecurities to be your best authentic self. Our branch manager, Aaron, will be sharing his story, and then we will meet some of our black leaders who will be discussing today's topic. We will be opening for questions, so please use the chat for any questions that you might have for Aaron or our panel today and we'll, we'll do our best to get to them. So I'm gonna hand over to Aaron. So good morning, Aaron. Thank you for joining me this morning. Please, can you introduce yourself and share your story? I am Aaron, a mixed race of Welsh and African heritage, Sierra Leone to be precise. I'm from Levisume, the inner city of Manchester, and I'm the first person in my family to attend university, as many of you may also be. I'm the eldest of five, and it's important to note that we wasn't poor, but in a family of seven, total, I was taught from a young age that you have to earn your keep and you have to work for what you want. From a teenager, I started a paper round to buy my football boots, my first season ticket for Man City, and that's pre-shake. I ran youth clubs and applied for funding for activities and facility improvements in my local area, and from there I picked up jobs in my two local leisure centres to further my earnings and work experiences from the future. Today, I'm gonna to share some experiences in my personal and professional life to hopefully give you all some tools to deal with discrimination and your own sense of insecurity and belonging. Racism, stereotyping and discrimination is real, as many of you may have unfortunately experienced it or witnessed in your journey so far. I've experienced this on many of occasions from being pulled over by the police on my bike as a youngster to see if it was stolen, to being pulled over two weeks ago as a 29 year old businessman to see if the car was stolen and I was driving legit. Even playing football for my local Sunday league team, I've been racially abused. I've been called a monkey in the last 12 months, but this isn't a one-size-fits-all story, but I'm sure you all can relate on some level about what I have shared. This leads me on to my professional life. I'm currently a branch manager in Altering in Manchester, and I've been at Enterprise rent -Fire for nearly eight years in November. Hopefully many more su successful years will follow, but my journey has been muddied by my experiences to date. And I'm thankful to say that I've learned from each and every one of them. When I, when I initially applied for the grad scheme, the interview had four stages with a group assessment centre, the final step to start your career. When arriving at the Northwest head office in Warrington, it was evident in my mind that I was the one brown face in the room. And immediately I withdrew my authentic self. I didn't want to come across as ghetto, loud and black, or even speak with my thick local manc accent, as you probably already noticed. I spoke when spoken to and literally kept myself to myself. And when I say that, I mean literally, no, like they didn't meet me. And this led to me not being accepted to, for the role. The feedback I received was that I was quiet, didn't show leadership abilities or on overall, a lack of meaningful participation. But fortunately, I was called back for a customer service role where I worked in a store with no real prospect for progression or that was the plan anyway. 
But as I started in my first door, Sulphur Keys, which is by Old Trafford, unfortunately, I come out on my shelf. I showed enough for my manager to put me forward for the assessment centre again after only three months. And he couldn't believe I'd saw myself so short that I hadn't have been accepted before. And as I was going for the second assessment centre, it just really pushed me to be me. I tried to convey what had happened in the first instance, but at that point, I was young. I didn't really know how to explain it. I didn't have the confidence to. And one thing about me, I'm really, really confident. Even in the first assessment centre, when I'm spoken to, I'm confident, but in them settings, I just, just couldn't get it across. Anyway, from there, I went to the second assessment day and I was determined to show that I really belonged and deserved the opportunity to get on the grad scheme and eventually progress to a successful branch manager that I have done today, if I say so anyway. However, as I've progressed, I kept falling into the same trap. As a trainee progressing through to branch manager, the through the stages, you have to go to head office on many of occasion for either training sessions, meetings or development centres. And again, when I'm there, I place myself as one of the few brown people there. Out of 30 or 40 people, and there may be two or three. And I didn't want to show my true self, who's a bit cheeky, thinks he's funny, and likes to lead conversations that are progressive in the professional sense. I like to debate, bring new ideas. But when I was there, for some reason, I just withdrew myself and I didn't want to be the black guy. I didn't want to be aggressive or intimidating, which, you know, that does come across. Well, to some people, they, they feel that way. Anyway, moving forward a bit, we're mapping out my long-term future to progress to be an area manager, which is my next step now. I attended the Learning Development Centre, where I was paired up with an area manager called Claire. As most people know, she doesn't pull no punches. She's very forthright, honest with her opinions, and that's something that I like. She already knew me, but mainly off word of mouth and her own observations and head office in them settings, where I'd always attend for like meetings or, you know, training sessions. So anyway, I've asked her for her honest opinion of what she believes I could work on to put myself in life for an area manager role in the future. Straight away, she says, Aaron, your performance speaks for itself. Your numbers are great. Your team buy into you and they love working for you, but I don't see you smile. I don't see you interact. I can't see why so many people will buy into you. It just baffles me because I don't see that. And straight away, I just, I just knew what she meant. I didn't project the person I am daily, the person I am with my managers, the person I am with my team on a day-to-day -day basis. Again, similar to my first ass assessment center, I was worried about being perceived in a negative light because of my heritage, my background, because of the experiences like I've discussed earlier, where I've been placed in a box, where I've been stereotyped, where I've been discriminated against just for my identity, for who I am. But personal brand is everything when it comes to progression. And because I was worried about being perceived in a certain way, I had negatively impacted this because I'd withdrew myself. By stereotyping others, thinking they'll be stereotyping me, I didn't show who I really was. So moving forward, I've made step to, steps to overcome this by speaking to more senior managers and sharing my insecurities, which they overwhelm me. I can't believe such thoughts will come to mind in such situations, but why would they? They're part of the norm. I spoke to other colleagues who have, who have ethnic backgrounds and they do relate on some level. But I've opened myself up. I've used my previous success, like in my ses second assessment center, and I started to drip feed my personality to those who haven't experienced it. It's seamless. People didn't react in a negative way. I thought people felt they would. They feel like they got closer to me. But in fact, they actually are meeting who I actually am. They saw the everyday cheeky, teasing black boy from Manchester who has high, amb high ambitions and the talents to match. And I say black, I know I'm brown, but still, I, that's how I identify. I identify in black culture. I come from a black family. That's how people identify me. Speaking to senior managers now, they see me in those higher roles that I didn't think I'd be accepted for before. And to bring it back full circle, I was recently planning to be in it, to apply for an area manager role and I had my hair in braids. And honestly, I was really concerned that my hair was black, that this would project my blackness too much. And it would go against me in the interview process against a white counterpart. But there you go. I've done it again. I was going to take my braids out, scale black, back my blackness. And when I discussed this to people, they were baffled as I am a little bit now, but I still understand why I did that. But this is something that basically I am accepted for me, who I am and nothing else but me. And this is something that I am now boastful about. And I'm determined to share with others so they don't fall into the same traps that I have. By stereotyping others and worrying about how you're perceived, you're in fact stereotyping yourself, literally. Thank you. Aaron, thank you so much for sharing your, 
your journey. That was really insightful. Um, really interesting to hear about the battles that you faced and how you've managed to hopefully over time overcome them and actually by sharing how you feel has been really helpful to you in your career so far. Um, so really, yeah, really interesting to hear. And uh, I'd like to now take this opportunity to introduce our panelists for today. Um, Aaron is going to stay with us um, on the panel. So please um, feel free to ask any questions um, and to the rest of the panelists today. Um, so I'm going to uh, invite Ashley, Ashley Thomas, Jane, Jay Murray, Lyndon, Lenad and uh, Bola Ad Adajobi to the uh, to the platform. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. morning. Hopefully you're all doing well. I'm sure you've just listened to um, to Aaron and his story, and we are going to talk more about some of the key points that Aaron made um, about those insecurities. Um, you know, about some of the ways to handle those, maybe going through life, going through education, going into work. Before we do, um, I do want everyone to, to meet our panellists and get to know you. So, Ashley, I'm going to start with you. Um, would you mind just introducing yourself? I'd be really interested to find out um, where you studied, so where you went to university, um, what you studied, and what is your current role today? And just maybe explain a little bit about what that role involves. Oh, yeah, Absolutely. Um, okay, so my name is Ashley Thomas. Um, I went to the University of West London. Um, at the moment, I still work with Enterprise Rent-A-Car, of course, um, and I am a talent development um, specialist. And what that means is that I am in control of the development for all of our trainees uh, and managers in our group. So that's, a, so that's looking after the development of about 800 to 900 employees. Amazing. Wow. What a job. Okay, thank you. If we can go next to Jane. Hi everyone, my name is Jane Murari. I am currently an assistant manager at Enterprise Rental Car in Loughborough. And um, what does that entail? That entails working together with the branch manager to run our own branch is, um, at Enterprise, a little bit like your own business. You have your own team, you've got different targets that you have to meet, whilst well, just making sure that you meet the customer service requirements. I'm originally from Leicester. I'm a DMU girl myself, so I went to the Montford University. I studied law and I graduated in 2018. And I'm really enjoying my time at Enterprise. Amazing. Thank you. Thanks, Jane. Over to you, Lyndon. Hi, my name's Lyndon. Um, based up in Scotland, went to Heriot University, studied finance. Um, I'm currently based at one of our flagship branches in Edinburgh, the Edinburgh State Centre. But as of yesterday, I actually just got my second promotion to assistant manager of our core stuff and branch. So excited to go oh, and amazing. start that new challenge. Well thank done. you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, a lot of hard work and a lot of reward as well. I am also the diversity, equity and inclusion area leader for the whole of Edinburgh. So my roles within that, similar to Jane, is obviously just on the normal day-to-day -day stuff like running the branch, running the business. But the bit that I especially kind of resonate with, especially with Black History Month and everything that kind of goes with that is being the area leader for our diversity, uh, inclusion and, oh, sorry, diversity, inclusion and equity committee is that it gives me the opportunity to share my story, give other people the platform to be able to share their story, try and drive a little bit more diversity within Scotland itself because it's not the most diverse place. So having that platform and obviously having a great company that I work for, which has given me that platform to be able to do that, is something that I find very amazing. So that's a, just a little bit about me. What an introduction. Thank you. And I love hearing about people's promotions and that's incredible to hear. So I didn't know that. So, so really well done. Well done. Um, okay. And then we have Bola. Hi, oh, Bola. Hi. 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 Um, my name is Bola and I'm originally from Nigeria. Um, I moved to the UK in 2012 um, for a better life and a better education. And um, it's been super interesting from that because when you come to the UK, um, it's a whole new culture completely from what you're used to back in Africa. Um, one of the most interesting things I'll probably say about me is how all my family, um, I'm the first one to ever be in the UK. So that was like pretty much a big deal for my family. And obviously um, going to university, um, 
and obviously gain a master's degree as well. So that was like pretty huge. When I finished my master's, um, I had enterprise there, obviously, to um, accept me into their company. Um, and I joined in August, I'm going to say, as well. And last month, I got promoted to assistant manager. So it's been a really huge um, well journey done. for me. Yeah. Oh, well done. That's amazing. And um, where did you do your master's, Bola? Just out of interest. Why did I do it? Mostly because my parents aren't educated. Um, oh. To be first... oh, did you say where? Oh, where? where? <laughs> oh, where? <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry, I didn't mean to like. That's okay. <laughs> But um, I did it at the University of Sussex. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. Well, what an incredible lady you are. We're so happy to have you on the panel today. So thank you all so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. So I, I've got a couple of questions to ask. Um, and then we are going to go to um, to the chat because I can see we've got questions coming through, which is excellent. Um, so my first question was really clear about the importance of being authentic and you know Aaron you know really told his story really incredible story about his journey and how sometimes you can go back into your shell and not be your authentic self and actually by doing that it can certainly do you a disservice in your career um, so whether it's a university or applying for positions in the workplace um, I just want to ask has there been any times for the rest of our panelists where you felt you haven't been able to be your your true authentic self um and i'd just be interested to hear why that was and maybe some tips on how you managed to overcome that if you did at all so ashley i'm going to go to you first just to ask this question if that's okay yeah absolutely um okay so to be fair okay so i went to the university of west london to be fair they've got like really great links to like uh, to like the to like workplaces and companies so for me, I um, when I was studying at, um, at the University of West London, they would do at least like two really big careers fairs a year. Um, and they always like really try to get all of, the, all of the students really involved with attending the careers fairs and, um, and getting involved. Uh, and one of, the, one of my biggest regrets is that, it, that, uh, that at every careers fair, and to be fair, even came into one of my lecturers, um, into one of my lectures and uh, even Enterprise came in and spoke to us about the careers path that they have at Enterprise but being a person of colour I always thought that you know what like my ability and my and my opportunity to join a big corporate what and what I thought was a big corporate white company I was like absolutely well what's the point of even putting myself forward why even try so I absolutely did not get involved I didn't think about it I really didn't even make it an option for me and two years after leaving, uh, after leaving university, I then joined Enterprise Rent-A-Car. And sometimes I still kick myself and I think, oh my God, imagine how much further I could be in my career, how much more I could have achieved had I three years earlier actually joined the Enterprise, um, jo joined the enterprise family and everything that I could have achieved. And that, that to me is just a really big lesson in terms of holding yourself back based on what you think other people will think of you, uh, not actually just seizing every opportunity that is available to you so especially if there is anyone on here that's thinking about joining a company or thinking oh well it do will i even have a real opportunity don't don't let yourself be the person that holds you back if maybe there is some equality of course challenge it but don't hold yourself back from an opportunity where you could thrive that's such great advice and how incredible that you started with us two years later and yet, if you'd gone to that career fair, how things may have been different. And, you know, things happen for a reason, I guess. But, you know, I'd be interested. To, I mean, that's fantastic advice, you know, because there might be people here today watching that have those same feelings um, and have those anxieties about going into a, a big sports hall or on a virtual career fair today and speaking to, to other employers. Um, how, how do you think, um, you know, how do you think... You, I presume you didn't have that advice back then, but I guess you wish you had or had attended this webinar even. But, yeah. you know, what advice would you give? But, you know, it's very easy to say, kind of like push yourself out there. But, um, you know, just what, what, um, what would have been helpful to you, do you think, back then? You know, I think what would have been really helpful is to have like a really good support network around me that would have really encouraged me that what I have now 
again, yeah. having joined the having joined the enterprise family and having so many like. I feel like a lot of the time when people join the work, join a workforce, they think that it's a competition. You have to be you have to be better than everyone around you, but you can't ask people for help, if that makes sense. Uh, but that is absolutely not the ethos of the ethos of enterprise. Like it's, ever since I joined this company, anyone that you talk to, anyone that you reach out to is always so happy to help. And that has given me the biggest support network. And I, and honestly, I've never felt so enriched in my life to feel like anything that I want to be able to achieve. There are so many people that I can reach out to that have the strengths in every different area to help me achieve anything that I'd want to go after. So okay. I just wish that back then I had that same support network and, and that I was so and that I was so comfortable to have those conversations with friends and family in order to help myself achieve that as well. Great advice. And I think it's about creating a network. You know, there's lots of opportunities when you're at university um, to create networks, you know, amongst your friends, of course, but amongst academics, um, you know, on LinkedIn, uh, talking to different employers. And hopefully that helps, you know, kind of give you the confidence rather than walking into a room where you don't know anybody. So I think that's great advice, Ashley. I'm going to ask you, Jane, the same question. So has it ever been a situation where you felt you couldn't be your authentic self? And you know, maybe you still have those feelings today and have you been able to overcome them? Yeah, to me, Claire, as a black woman, especially being in an assistant manager position, I tend to come forth as a very confident person. Being authentic to me means remaining true to my values, to my beliefs and staying true to my personality. But at the same time, being able to cultivate that courage to be imperfect and to be vulnerable in order to allow yourself to be accepted for who you are. Now, I've got such a strong network, especially with women in leadership within enterprise that I've not had that struggle. Like what Ashley said, there are so many people that you can go to because everybody has started off in the same position. There's so many people that you can go to and I've never really had anybody or heard of anybody be turned down or say, actually, no, I'm not able to help you with that. But for most uni students, I remember a time when I was at university and within the degree that you're studying, you have to choose different modules. And there's that peer pressure or the feeling of being singled out. Maybe your friends are doing a different module to what you're doing. And it strikes fear in you, a little bit of that fear of change. What happens if I've not made the right decision? It's being authentic to me is those sort of experiences and allowing yourself to not only to fear change because you can't always be perfect, but just allowing yourself to just have that little bit more of imperfectness because that's the only way you'd be able to learn and to be able to actually cultivate yourself and to be able to unlock your full potential. So fully agree with what Ashley has said. And I have overcome that in enterprise as a woman in leadership has really played a big role, especially being able to go to other branches and seeing people um, in senior positions who are females who, you know, black females who are branch managers and assistant managers and knowing that I can go to those people and I can ask them questions because they've been through the same journey as me. That's, that's so, so good advice. I mean, it's about, you know, not second guessing your choices, your decisions, just going for it. Certainly when you're at university, sort of believing in yourself, 100%. But I think, you know, kind of something you mentioned, Jane, was about um, the culture of the company that you join and I think certainly when you're a student and you're eventually coming to that point where you're looking at an employer um, and where to work um, sometimes I don't think um, the culture or the values of the organization are necessarily um, researched enough certainly from interviewing a lot of the candidates we have uh, for our management training program and I think as we talk about diversity, equity, inclusion, the, the culture of the company is really important in terms of, are you going to be your true self? Are you going to be able to be your best authentic self, the best version of yourself in that organization? So that really nicely leads on to my next question. And um, the question is, how significant, um, I'm just quite interested to find out from you, the values and the culture of the company have been to you. Um, and is your impression different um, of certainly the values and the culture of enterprise, um, as you all work at enterprise, so I can only ask you about enterprise, but is, is the, are the values and the culture different now to maybe what you thought they would be before you joined the company? So I'm going to go to, to Lyndon on this question. Um, to be honest, when like I was researching like the company, because the way that I actually found out about enterprise was through one of the business lines that we have where we provide replacement vehicles. It was like 
just after like university, just like about finished, bought myself like a brand new car to celebrate. Obviously, somebody crashed into me first time ever. So Enterprise was actually a company that gave me my replacement vehicle. And while speaking to like one of my future colleagues who I ended up actually being kind of like the best man at his wedding is something that I didn't really realize when I was looking at Enterprise or any other like grad schemes when I was going forward. And when I started looking a little bit deeper into the culture and the values that they have, they resonated a lot with myself. Um, for example, like the colors I'm wearing today, like we have on our lawn yard, which represent um, gender, race, um, sexuality, and religion. It's just one of those ones where I felt like as a black male going into like the next stage of my life, my next stage of my career, is that something that's going to be impacting me in a negative way? And when I did my research, I was learned about the values and obviously the rules and the opportunities that I've had since being here. It showed me that this was a company that was looking not just at the surface, seeing what the individual brings. Because the one kind of value that we have that I resonate the most with is our door is open. Where, like Jane said, like uh, Ashley said, is where you feel you're able to go and speak to any single person. You're not judged based on what you look like, what you bring, where you come from. And it's something that I fought for about when I came into the company. And it's something that I think has increased a lot more since I've been here, just to see the different people that I've met, not ever feeling like I've been prejudged based on my race or like my gender, and just feeling like I have an equal opportunity as much as the next person. And where I'm being given more opportunities than other people have been given, not necessarily just because of who I am, but also like what I bring to the table. So just looking at past the surface not being like okay you fit this certain role that's what you're going to put you forward for it's like they see me as an individual they see the values that i have they see the culture that i try to bring the culture that they have already that's what resonates the most with myself and it's probably one of the biggest highlights i would say is that i have kind of saw coming in and working as part of the enterprise family that's really interesting i mean we have you know eight clear values at enterprise and it's very easy sometimes for an organization to to put those values on a website but for you to actually see those values relate to them so values that mirror yours Lyndon and then to actually then come into the company and feel that they're actually values we work and, and live by every single day is really important um 100%. Yeah, and it's really great that you've um, you've identified that. And it's about, you know, the best performer will get promoted um, yeah. ultimately, but it's ensuring we've got equity to make sure that you can be the best performer that you can be and everyone's got that equal opportunity. So, um, yeah, really well put. I'm going to move across to Bola now. So, Bola, same question to you. Um, just talking about the values again, just were they different to what you um, expected from maybe... Uh, before you started versus what you kind of feel now? So when I originally started, because for me, I feel like one of the key things about life is being what everyone is being appreciated and rewarded for what you do. So I wanted to work for a company that was going to obviously um, appreciate my skills and what I was bringing to the table. And I actually saw at Enterprise that one of their key values and vision statement um, was rewarding everyone, even the customers, and going the extra mile for their employees and giving them the best development and training they need. So we have, obviously, as Claire said, we have um, eight founding values, but there are two of them that literally like, like it's pretty much what I do every day. Um, the first one is um, customer service is a way of life. Obviously, as we know, as customers, we're all customers. Like you want to be treated with respect and where you go. Um, so that helps me um, every day when I'm serving a customer to give them the best service that they need because I know I want to be treated them the same way and just going the extra mile for them and just making them leave and knowing that you know what you couldn't have done anything better um, um, than what you've done. And the second value was um, we work hard, we work hard and reward hard. So obviously you knowing that you provided an excellent customer service for a customer, that customer will definitely come back to you, like you're bringing business to enterprise. And um, at enterprise, we're currently what we're doing at enterprise right now, we have a service survey, if I want to put it that way. So for every customer that returns, they get a text message um, to fill out a quick survey of how the service went. And once you get your name mentioned, that is £250 that you get. So that is pretty much really good because like 
all your hard work is being rewarded by that person that you've been saying you've an excellent customer service because we could all easily ignore a survey that you get from a business but we need to actually like fill out that survey and then talk about that person mention their name means you've done a really great thing for them so it's still just two key values that works um, that that was not with me so customer service and enterprise reward and the staff for what they do brilliant Oh, I love that you named your top two. Thank you, Bola. <laughs> um, and, you know, I guess, did you sort of research the values of the company or did you know much about the values before um, starting with us? To be honest with you, um, when I joined the enterprise, I had zero, not zero ideas about the company because I was just literally on the bus and I saw an enterprise and I was like, oh, let me just apply to this company. <laughs> I, yeah, and then when I got the call from, when I got the call from Rice saying, oh, uh, we saw your survey would like uh, for you to come for an interview. I was like, oh, wow, I, re- I really wasn't expecting that. So that was when I started like digging into the company, seeing what yeah. it was about. And as I said, you know, working in a rewarding hard was like really important for me. I was like, okay, they seem to take some of my, um, some of my wants. Let me give them a try. And yeah. I've regretted it since. I don't, and I don't think that's unusual, Bolo. I don't think, you know, certainly many years ago when I was applying for lots of different companies when I left university I wasn't necessarily doing the research that I probably advise students to do today um, just to be successful in that interview and and you know really understand the values of the company and what we're about but I think going back to the topic of today which is about being authentic and being your true self I think you know it's really important to know that the values are you know you know when you're going through that process maybe asking an employer how are those values um, demonstrated within the organization you know certainly as we talk about diversity and inclusion I think that's really important that um, you understand what what the organization's doing so yeah really good question thank you I believe we may have some questions coming in on the chat so I'm going to ask one more and then we're going to go to see what questions we've got coming in um, I'm just really interested Aaron we're going to go back to you um, you've really kind of painted a really clear picture of your journey so far um and you know clearly you're now gunning for the next uh, promotion area manager which is absolutely amazing so I guess I was just gonna sort of find out I'm really intrigued to see what your biggest career highlight has been so far do you think in your career has there been one kind of memorable moment that you are really proud of I guess so far in your career well I can split it into two I know it's not all one but um, when I was um, basically coming out of pandemic, we went from zero to 200 cars on rent um, and we posted the biggest profits we had pre-pandemic. So that was one performance highlight. Wow. But and on a separate note, um, sharing the importance of Black History Month. Two years ago, Black History Month wasn't essentially, was was pretty irrelevant to in the BAME meetings we had. Mm-hmm. And... Last year leading up to it, I really expressed my frustration and I thought, especially with everything that was going on with George Floyd and the Black Lives Matter movement, I thought we needed to do more. And I feel that's led to such seminars, seminars as this and more conversations. We're doing a lot more about it. So I think that is a big achievement. I feel, I feel that's a big achievement. It's a huge man. achievement. And feeling that you have a voice and it's listened to um, is really important. And yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, we talk about we put talk about this throughout the year and and it's important we say you know we're not just celebrating our black employees because it's black history month but this is something that should be celebrated every day week month and we're really encouraging all of our employees to be their best version of themselves. and I think yeah that's really critical um that we carry on the conversation so thank you for for answering with two answers Aaron I shouldn't expect anything less um and um over to you um who we're going to go to next Ash let's go with you next um what would be your career highlight so far oh okay um well I feel like that's a there's there's a little bit of background that goes into this answer Claire okay <laughs> I, I'm all ears I'm listening perfect okay so <laughs> okay to, to to be able to answer this I, I need you guys to understand that like I grew up in Lewisham, um, which is like a hub for minorities. So I've never really, uh, for me, like I always used to think that racism was like a, um, an American's construct. I was like, yeah, that's, that doesn't happen here. Um, but then I, but so, well, so ultimately I joined Enterprise and I always thought coming from a really big family, I, I have like 24 cousins and, and, I, and I'm like the 23rd. So I'm pretty low down on the list. 
but I was still the first one to go to and graduate from university. So I was already like, wow. there you go. I've made it in life now. <laughs> then I, then I start enterprise and I was like, oh, okay, I'm doing pretty well for myself. If I can make it to an assistant manager, I've made it in life. That's it. So I said, so, but then I got to, but I made it to an assistant manager in nine months into my career, which is, which is faster than most people past their, past their graduate scheme. So I was like, okay, I'm, I guess I'm doing really well here. What else can I do? So after becoming an assistant manager, my, my, uh, my branch manager tells me, oh, do you know what? You're doing really well. Apply for the next branch manager role you see. So, uh, so, I, so, I, so I applied for a role that was by no means close to my house. Um, so I relocated for my first branch manager role as well. And for that, I was just like, I set myself a target of assistant manager. I've superseded that. Is this real? Um, am I am I actually good enough to have this position? Can I am I am I good enough to do this? Um, and I absolutely stormed that position. I went on to have another two branches after that as well, which were all promotions for me. Um, and now I've been to promoted to the talent development department, where I'm looking after like eight eight to nine hundred employees and their careers. And that to me is absolutely huge. That's phenomenal. So every day for me, I come to work being so proud and so uh, and so like I just revel in the success that I've had so far and I'm just like do you know what the, the, I had I had a ceiling and I've absolutely smashed that ceiling and now I think it's so important that we understand that your achieve you can go so much further than the initial achievements you think you can have and always keep pushing those successes and everything that you aspire to do like I know I know I've, I've definitely achieved what I set out to do but now I'm like, okay, how do I reform my aspirations to make sure I keep pushing? How can I get even further? So yeah, there's, a, there's no limit. There's no glass ceiling. You got to no keep going. Ceiling. You got to yeah. keep going. And I bet your family is so proud. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So proud. Well done. Amazing. Okay. Well, we are going to go to, we are going to go to the, the chat because I'm conscious that we've got some, some questions coming in. So my colleague, uh, Becky, I think you're helping just navigate through the questions we've got. So would you mind, um, would you mind sharing any questions that we have coming from the audience uh, today? Yeah. So we've got the first one for whichever of the panelists wants to take it. So how has enterprise as a company enabled you to be your authentic self and how do you feel that it's, it has contributed to your success? Oh, that is a good question. Um, who wants to take that? Lyndon, shall we get you to take yeah. that? Yeah, I can take that. Um, so just to give you a little bit of background about myself before I delve into the question, like um, I was born in Zimbabwe, came to the UK in like 2003, lived in Leeds and then moved up to Scotland in like 2009, went to school and then university here. Um, so the one thing that I always had was being able to adapt into any situation just because I've been in a few different places, like different cities, different countries. So I was able to adapt to that. So what I always found was the easiest way for myself to adapt was to kind of like pull myself a little, like back a little bit so I can kind of fit into that kind of group. But then the more I got older and the more I realized, I started to realize the kind of person I am and also the influences that I had from home was just be confident in your own ability, be confident in yourself and your authentic self is someone somebody's going to have to take on. And it's one of those things that I got a lot from my mum because she was kind of like one of those women that robbed against the green a little bit. She was like <laughs> my way or the highway sort of thing, which is kind of like a life lesson that I took on board. And as I came into like the next stage of my career, after I was graduating from university, applying for roles, got my role at Enterprise, was like, okay, I've done and played the game a little bit. Now let me show my true self because like, I feel like my true self, my authentic self is worthy of anyone and anything. And whilst having came in, obviously you have your assessment centers, as Aaron was saying, you go through that. And lucky enough, I was almost able to go through it first time and obviously get the role, um, the role kind of given to me. From going forward and obviously seeing the success I had from that standpoint, I was okay. Myself is good enough is more than good enough so let me just keep on putting my best self forward be authentic to who i am the values that i have whether that be from my own life my friends my social life or even like my education so based on that that's what i did and with that i've had a lot of great success and within enterprise itself like i've not felt like a single day i had to teach who i was mm -hmm. and i think that's the biggest thing for myself because 
for a little while, just depending on like COVID and stuff like that, and like situations that happened, I ended up being the only black employee within the whole of Scotland and Northern Ireland. That's when I realized that this is very important, not only just for myself, but for my culture, my people, my background. I need to show my authentic self just so that the next person doesn't feel like they need to be somewhat different to what they actually are. That way they can obviously have the success that I've had, but not have to alter who they are from them. Yeah, that's a great point. It takes a lot of courage and certainly um, some of your mother's traits have come out there, Lindsay, and I think yeah. kind of sounds a bit. Yeah. But um, yeah, I think I think the support you get um, in within Enterprise, which is the original question, is really, really important. And um, I don't know if anyone else wants to maybe share some of the things that happen um, internally that maybe students might not realise we do, just to kind of talk about maybe um, did anyone have like a mentor when they started or um, throughout their career, or maybe that was an informal or, or formal mentor. Um, Jane, did you want to did you want to help answer that? Yeah, definitely. Um, one thing I want everybody to understand is with Enterprise, you're coming into a company where they only promote from within. So that vulnerableness and that willingness to remain true to yourself, you really should reflect right there because everybody has started off in that exact same position. I'm talking even Claire. Claire has started off in the position that I started off. And you get mentors. Um, you know, once you join a branch, you do get a mentor. And it's really important knowing that you can lean on those people. You can direct any questions that you have about those people. Sometimes even I always, I go to my mentor and I, I go to him and I'm like, this is a really uncomfortable situation. This is a really uncomfortable question, but I know and I'm confident enough to know that I can come to you and I can ask you this because I know before you're in the position that you're in, you've started off from the position that I began in. So I feel like the company does a lot in terms of making sure that you're surrounded with the right people, making sure that they're providing such a positive and such a fun um, working environment where it just gives the ability to just shine and just just remain as your true self mm. and know that everyone's been in that position so if you've Absolutely. got a challenge then actually probably someone else has faced that challenge yeah and really good as well in the sense of making mistakes mm. those the people above you and the people that will come after you will make the exact same mistake it's a learning process and I feel like that's one thing Thing that gives me a sense of belonging when it comes to enterprise and a comfort that I don't think I would have got with any other employees you know that I can make those mistakes and I can go to people and when I tell them this is what's happened they're like oh two years ago I did that but this is how I overcome <laughs> it <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah that's a great point we've all made them and uh, it's, it's good to share and those those worries for sure but I think that's really kind of um illustrated the support network that you get and how important that is um good good answer um becky do we have any more questions yeah we've got another one here so is it important to present yourself how you want rather than present yourself as you think you are perceived oh i'm gonna go back to aaron on that question because i think that was a really good point that he made and might be better to to expand upon that if you can aaron yeah, it's definitely better to to display yourself how you want to, who you really are, because my problem was I was worried about being perceived a certain way because of the way I look, because of my heritage, which went against me negatively. When I was really myself, as I am today, people have received me a lot better because it's more authentic and they can relate to it a bit better. So definitely it's about being the person you want to be. It must be really hard to try and also keep up with being that person that you want naturally, you know, you're kind of almost putting a, a front on or a, a disguise on all the time. Um, Ashley, a, anything, you know, you want to add on that point about um, being your true authentic self in terms of how you perceived and how you behave and maybe even how you look? Yeah, absolutely. Um, to be fair, I've got, I, well, I can, I can give you two points on this to be fair. Um, so, <laughs> Well, again, being a person of color, I, I can't tell you. So oof. so I, I got this position that I currently have back in April when um back in uh, well back in April and with this position I also get an assigned company car. Um so I got a 70 plate Hyundai Ionic, which uh Ooh. which again is a uh, which again is an it's a nice car, uh, but <laughs> driving around Lewisham in a 70 plate car as a black guy, sometimes with maybe my hair not done as a 
as pulled back as nicely as this. Uh, I was pulled over three times within the first two weeks of me getting that company car. And I was like, I'm not driving this thing anymore. I'm just, uh, I'm either going to take the bus or walk where I need to go. But, and that sometimes can be really disheartening. And the, and sometimes the, uh, sometimes the frustration of having, of, of having those things happen to you also fuel your fire to, to make change. Um, so one of the things that, uh, that me and one of the, the old assistant managers that I done was we went to our senior leadership team, our group rental manager and the, uh, and the, uh, and the um, assistant vice president of our company in our group for the South Beast of England. Um, and we set up this, uh, a reverse mentoring program where actually we as a, whereas we and other people as minorities, like on the, at, at the ground level of our company, reverse mentor the people that are level, well, that are at, in the highest senior leadership wow. positions. And we help them to understand the struggles that we go through as minorities in the business and what happens to us in order to help broaden their experience and their understanding of all of their employees and what happens in their journeys. And I feel like that's just one way that you can, I feel like that's just one example of how enterprise really helps us to understand and engage with minorities in the business. Um, and I feel like that's really fantastic. Um, the second thing I can say is that when... <laughs> Claire, you're killing me. I'm not saying anything. I'm just... <laughs> go on. I, go on. Um, well, the second thing I can say is when I joined enterprise, uh, I obviously, guys, you can't really mask the fact that, you know, you're a minority. Like my skin color is my skin color. Um, but I was like, okay, being part of the LGBTQ plus community, I was like, let me not double up on issues here. So I kind of kept that one to the side and I was like, okay, let, how, do we, uh, how do we progress just being a person of color? And I definitely feel like that was 100% the wrong decision on my part. Uh, I thought having, having come out at work, I feel so much more comfortable to be able to express myself and talk to, uh, and talk to many more people um, and help everyone understand how you don't have to you don't have to show yourself in the way that you think your company wants you to behave in order to be successful. Again, it's the, it's the diversity, it's, it's people having different opinions, people thinking in different ways and being from diverse communities that allows our business to come together and move so far forward as it has it already. So thinking, it's, it's, it goes against you thinking that you have to hold yourself back and, and subdue yourself in order to be successful subduing yourself is also subduing your, your progression so yeah that's a that's a great point you know the the diverse organizations are the ones that succeed because of the makeup of their workforce and the different ideas that they bring to the, to the table so absolutely 100 percent. and I really like your point about the reverse mentoring um that leading by listening and I know that's something that our senior leadership team did probably about a year ago and the conversations are ongoing, but really listening to our employees, our employees from different ethnic groups to understand, yeah. you know, some of the challenges and, you know, look at even better ways that we can create equity within within the company. So really well answered. Thank you. Um, OK, um, I think we've still got lots of questions. And I'm conscious of time. So, Becky, uh, do you want to ask another for me? Um, yeah. So we would, the next question we've got is I have had people saying that before you get a promotion as a black person, you have to work twice as hard as your white colleagues do. Has any of you experienced this during working at Enterprise? Oh, Ash has got his hand up. <laughs> we'll start with Ashley and then we'll go to anybody else that wants to, to answer that question. But I've certainly heard that before. Oh, I have, I have definitely heard that before. And just to like reference what I said earlier as well, I, I can't tell you how many times as people of minority, we also, we have that fear in the back of our minds and we don't go for promotions based on the fact that we think, oh, well, we're just not gonna get it anyway. And it's true. I think more than anything, it's that that holds us back from being able to progress in our workplaces. It's, I did, again, like Enterprise came to me in my, uni in my university lecture and said, like, we will fast track you. You will definitely be guaranteed at least an interview. Come, please come and join our company. And I. I walked out of there like with absolutely zero uh, with zero um, intent to follow up on that. And then I had to, again, apply for myself and go through that entire process three years after that lecture. So sometimes making sure that we actually seize the opportunities that we're given instead of thinking, oh, someone else is going to get that. Go for that position as well. If you don't get it. OK, no, no worries. But what if you do? 
Yeah. So that's it's just that, my take. It's that it. imposter, isn't it? That inner imposter that's talking to you on your shoulder saying, no, don't do it. Don't go for it. You're not good enough. And it's how do you how do you get rid of that imposter? How do you look at an opportunity and go, do you know what? I don't fit all the criteria that they're asking, but do you know what? I'm going to put in for it anyway, because guess what? Your white counterpart will be doing that. So, Absolutely. you know, how do you just make sure that, you know, that that imposter kind of disappears? Um, you know, really important. Has anyone else got another any points to add in, uh, or heard of that? Before, you know, that comment. Yeah. Lyndon? Yeah, so that was something like I heard a lot when I was kind of like growing up and obviously going into it the next years. Um, it's something that I feel is very common within like our kind of like ethnicity, the minorities, is that you feel like you always need to work twice as hard as everybody else just because you feel like you're going to be prejudged because of your skin color or your race or where you come from. Um, it's something that I kind of started worrying about a lot when I was going into that next stage. And Throughout my time at Enterprise, I don't feel like that's the case. I feel like I have the same equal opportunity as every single other person. And the one big thing as well that kind of like brought me to the forefront and brought me to the Enterprise was the fact that that promote within culture, that every single person has the same equal opportunity, even like our CEOs, like our vice presidents. They all start at the exact same spot that we, that you start, and they've got to that stage where they when they want to. Because back to your point that you made a little bit earlier on, Claire, where you said that there is that kind of gap between like the big three leaders and most foot 100 companies. And that's something that I've always kind of seen and kind of like has as a career goal is I want to be a CEO at some point. And I feel within enterprise that is more than achievable. Obviously, you need to put the hard work in and make sure you've got the resource and you're doing the right things. But that's not something I've ever felt like that's out of my reach. The whole time I've worked here and the whole time I was looking at working at Enterprise. Yeah, that's a great point. We have a very transparent kind of way that we measure performance, which I think is really helpful. It's, you know, the best performers do get promoted. And I think sometimes maybe organizations that aren't as transparent, you know, mm -hmm. maybe there's a perception uh, there. Um, but equally, you know, if you know, our, our Black Heritage employees are, to go back to that imposter, also holding themselves or pulling themselves out of the process. That's also, you know, a factor too. So it's really how as an organization do we help support support on both? So um, really good answer. Thank you, Lyndon. Um, I think we can probably have one more question, um, Becky, if we have any coming in. And then obviously we'll make an effort to answer all the questions from today that we can't answer live, but we'll get them, we'll get answers across to all the um, to all the participants today. So, um, Becky, do we have another question coming in? Yeah, we've um, we've been overwhelmed by the questions that we've had through. So I'll pick this for the last one. Um, so have any or all of you had any black role models throughout your time in enterprise? Good question. OK, um, who wants to answer that? I can see a few of you nodding. Ash, do you want to start? Because I can see you're nodding and smiling. Oh, absolutely. So to be fair, I've had, um, I feel like it's really important not just to have like, I feel like it's really important to have a diverse range of role models that you speak, that you always refer back to. Um, I've always had like, so, I mean, I guess to be fair, you guys might, might not understand uh, if you don't work at Enterprise Everyone, but um, so my area manager was a, was, um, was, was a BAME employee. Not only was she, uh, was she BAME, but she was also female, which I think is always absolutely phenomenal. Um, I think I think BAME issues are so important, but also being able to recognize women in leadership is so important as well. Um, so that to me was always like she will always be near and dear to my heart. Like and, and I always go back to her whenever I am, um, whenever I have a big decision that I need to make. Um, I also have like our, our group rental manager is a, is currently a um, of, of um, is also BAME, uh, Zach Gill. So it's always great to have those people in our senior leadership team. That we can always go back to and speak to um, and they and obviously having that same experience and understanding of uh, as us as BAME employees that really puts my mind at rest and makes me feel like this is a company where I can truly feel comfortable as well. Thank you thanks for sharing Aaron I saw you put your hand earlier. Yeah I just wanted to say um, it was really important when I started I had did have a BAME mentor but he wasn't black he didn't come from a black background he was Asian and still that did help me but um, I think it would have helped me even further when I was in my younger stages of a career that if I did have that black leader there I could relate to could relate to me a bit more on a level 
And that's where I want to get to. I want to be that person. So when we do have black employees come through, I want to be that guy that they can come to and share experiences with and guide them through. Yes, you are all our role models um, and will continue to be uh, really well answered. I'm really sorry we're not going to be able to get to all of the, the questions in the in the chat today. But as I said, we will make sure we do our best to, to get those answers to you. Um, I do want to, to mention that... Um, we are going to be running our Black Future Leaders program in December. So for any students that would be interested in a very bespoke development program, uh, please um, use this opportunity to um, respond to the email that you'll be getting about that. So if you've registered today, you'll receive that opportunity and we'd really love to you to be part of it. This series does run throughout the whole of October. So please um, tune in every Friday at 11 o'clock through October um, and next week's session is going to be talking about resilience so really focusing on that topic. Um, I think there's been lots of takeaways today um, you know growing your network, taking advantage of that network, finding role models, just going for it which I think has been a lot of the, the responses from uh, many of you today. Uh, some of you may be regretted not going for it earlier or being your true self, but your authenticity is absolutely important and you will not succeed if you can't be the best version of you. Um, so final question goes to Aaron. Um, and Aaron, I'm going to get you to close the session today. So my question is, why is supporting diversity and equity inclusion, do you think, important to any company? Um, and um, yeah, just, just to kind of close this and see us um, to finish the session. Yeah, for me, it allows new progressive ideas from different backgrounds and cultures. It also, also falls in line with our founding value, you know, um, strengthening communities at a time, one neighborhood at a time, and that requires diversity. And it allows for more opportunities for people like ourselves to go into senior management positions. Perfect. Thank so you. So it's, it's just so important. And just to note, um, Enterprise, recently we donated um, $55 million towards our Road Forward program, which, which is working on local projects around social and race equality. And those projects are projects that every region and enterprise are supporting. And um, some of them are national projects, some are certainly within the local community, which Aaron, you, you mentioned. So, you know, we've got, to, we've got to carry this forward and bring more amazing role models like yourself into the company to keep progressing um, through the ranks. So I look forward to hearing about all of your promotions. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. I really, really appreciate your time. Uh, and I'm really looking, for, hopefully we'll get to see some of you maybe next week. I'm not sure, but we've got some different guests I know arriving next week for the panel. So enjoy the rest of your busy day and uh, look forward to uh, seeing you again very soon. Take care.